Okay. I'm going to, I see that I've got some homework questions, but I don't want to go over the homework questions right now because I want to, I want to, remember I told you chapter one and chapter two was a lot of what? Reading. Okay, 20% of your test grade. Okay, 20% of your test material will come from that. So I'd really like to focus on the 80% um, because, okay, everybody got your handouts? Everybody got your outlines? Because if I cover chapter three, that means what's coming up? A test. And some of y'all about to have a fit to have a test. And some of y'all about to have a fit to get a date put on your own work. So we're going to hurry up and do that so some of y'all will not have a connection and go ahead and wait till whatever day before is due to actually do the work. Okay? So I want to go ahead and get at least into chapter three today. I know I may be skipping a couple. What was the last section we went over? 2.3. Is that the last? Is that last? Okay, we are going into 3.1. So there's there's really three parts to three point or chapter three. I'm not even going to look in the book. I'm not going. There's three parts. There's finding the mean and standard deviation or statistics. Finding the little lower, uh, uppercase statistics. Uh, uh, a set of data. I like to tell students your test scores. Remember how you, you know, find your, your average in a class. You add up four or five test scores. You divide by five. You multiply that by 80 percent. Then you take your homework grade and multiply that by 20 percent and add the two together. You know what I'm talking about? That that's called statistics. And 99% of you know how to do that because you've come up through K through 12 trying to figure out your grade before the final exam or whatever the case may be. Y'all know how to do that. I don't know if you know how to find the standard deviation or not, but you know how to do that. And the other is finding the mean and standard deviation of a frequency distribution. Now that's the one that I don't know if you know how to do or not. Okay? So we're going to look at those. And then there's finding the z-score and using the z-score to compare two <laughs> things that are not relative, that are not related, like basketball players versus presidents of the United States, or you know, uh, height of women at age 18 versus height of men at age 18, or whatever the case may be. So you know, that's two apples and oranges, two sets of apples and oranges that you can't really compare because they're different. All right, so three things. One, find the statistics for a uh, data set, which means just say find the statistics for data set, put on the data set test scores. And then find the mean, so find the statistics, which means mean and standard deviation of a frequency distribution. And then z scores and what are z scores. Okay, so that's what the three sections are in. What sections? Chapter 3.1 through what? All the way through what? 3.5. Okay, 3.4, 3.5, All right, so now does that mean we're going to have a test tomorrow because I'm doing chapter 3? No, it does not. All right, this is when you have to open your book and you have to look and see where I'm at as far as 3.1 through 3.5. Again, it has to, you have, the student has to take the book and what? Open it. Okay. Kind of like those of you that didn't print that off and I printed it off for you. Okay. You have to print things off. Well, in this case, you have to open your book. So there's a little bit of give and take here. Just want to make sure everybody understands that. And smile. Remember, I don't want to look at a class that looks like you winged on a pickle. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go to the homework, and I'll just pull up a question as soon as I find one that I really like. If I, find, if I pull up a question I really like, that means you need to put a star beside it. Oh, hint, hint. So let me go and pull up chapter contents. This is chapter three, and I'll go to... 3.2. Because I'm going to teach everything all together. Study plan. Mm. 
No. No. Just give me a second. I want to find something that's kind of simple to start with. Okay, here we go. I right, just ignore the directions because I don't want you to look at the directions because we're going to find everything. So write those down. You don't have to write down their names. Just write down PB, MB, JH, and write down the pulse rates. Okay? Go ahead and write that down. I'll blow that up for you. Thank you. Is it exactly the same? Yes. Good kid. It might be similar, but, huh? Okay, the numbers are, yeah, different. It's very rare that I pull one up and it's in the book. All right, there you go. Write those down. And you can go ahead and be putting it in order. Put the name, put, put it in order if you want to. And we're going to be finding all the statistics pertaining to this data set. Again, this is a data set because it's like test scores. Now, I do realize I've got three <coughs> plus degrees. I do realize you can do this in your calculator, but that's not what I'm doing. Okay? I'm wanting you to do it by hand. It's always nice to do it by hand before you know how to do it on your calculator. Now, I'm going to do it for instructional purposes. I'm going to do it in the Excel spreadsheet so you can see everything that you're supposed to do when you do it by hand. I wish they could make a toothpaste that would go with everyday things that you drink. They'd have to pass it out though. I don't think that's a good thing. Now I'm going to show you a little trick to learn in the war. That's a joke. Um, you see this little thing right here? That's in all your homework when you have a bunch of stuff you have to write down. And you can click on it and it copies it into Excel. Now I'm using Excel. Why? Why'd I tell you I use Excel in this class? Because I want to force all y'all to learn how to use Excel in one day? No. Because you see what type of You see what type of, now I love this presentation system, okay, I'm not a dinosaur, okay, I love it, but it has its limitations, and when you write big, like I do, and write unorganized, why you do it? do it again. Oh, there it is. Is that there? Sorry, I can do it real quick. I use the Excel spreadsheet because it forces me, not forces me because I'm not writing, but it forces me to have everything on one sheet so you can see where everything is. And if I tried to write all this on a sheet with my handwriting on this one board, I'd have to do two or three boards. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I use the Excel spreadsheet. So there's two things I want you to know, and this is on the recording. So, and I've had this discussion with my department head during the first year or two I did this about every other day. Okay, so that's not going to do any good because I still do it and she just gave up. Okay, so if you can't see, first of all, you can't see, where should you sit in the class? In the back. That's where you should sit. That's where everybody sits and can't see. You should, no offense to the back row, I'm not saying y'all, I'm just saying in general. Every student that I've ever had asked, I can't see. They've always sat on the back row, okay? So if you can't see the Excel spreadsheet, then we need to accommodate you because you're sitting in the back row, right? No, you need to get up and move to where you can see. The second thing is I do not expect anybody in here to learn Excel in one day, one semester, one hour. This is for those people that like Excel and use Excel and if you're not one of those people, then you just do it by hand, okay? Now, that's my two little things that I said. 
<laughs> it was on record now, it's on the recording, so you can't say that I want you to use Excel. I had somebody put that on an evaluation once, and I just thought it was hilarious. He thinks everybody's supposed to know Excel. No, I don't think anybody. Some of y'all in here have probably never used it. You need to use it because it's one of the best things to use in the real world as far as any kind of office documentation, any type of documentation. All right, I'll show that. Okay, here we go. Now, the first thing you have to do is put them what? In order. So you highlight this. I always like to just do it and let it expand. Go up to the handy dandies data and hit that and always hit expand and it incorporates everything. So that's the first thing to do. So first, number one, put in order. Second, go ahead and put down what you need to get. Well, there is the mean, which is also called X bar. Also called the average, which in the population group is called mu. All those things is going to be equal to what? What do we do with all these guys? Add them up and we divide by what? How many? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Divide by nine. There's your mean. <laughs> That's not right. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, then I didn't sum it up right. Let's, uh, let's do that again. It usually puts, I guess I need to put puts in there. Auto sign. There, now I put prints. Why didn't it put prints things around? Who knows? Russian tactic. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, Bar it's Bernie's fault now. Bernie's fault. Poor old Bernie. He loses the election, gets shanghaied by the Clinton machine and the DNC, and then he has to buy a $600,000 house. On the beach. Poor guy. Median, I wish you'd just freaking get a haircut. That's one thing I wish you'd do. Huh? No, but he brushes it all forward. Have you ever noticed that? He, his hair is brushed forward, and it's like sticking out this way. And I'm like, what? Median. When I say the word median, what's the first thing you think of? Middle of the road, that, that concrete thing. Median, right? First thing to think of, in the middle of the road. All right, so if n is odd, which n is odd, because you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine numbers, nine test grades, so n is odd. How do you find the median if n is odd? You just find the middle. Simple as that. Now, I'm going over some stuff that you may have forgotten. I don't know. Some of you may have created these formulas, okay? But to the ones that haven't created, I'm trying to bring it back. Because when we get to the frequency distributions, there's going to be enough lost people. So, all right. So I'm going to highlight that and put that right there. So you will know that the middle is the median. What if I had eight numbers? Take the average of the two middle. Write that down. If n is equal to eight or n is equal to 10, you find the two middle ones after you put them in order. You find the two middle ones and take the average. Add them up and divide by two. Mode. Mode equals most, right? Can you have more than one mode? Yes. They have to all be the same. I mean, they show up the same amount of times. You can't have 36 show up twice and 42 show up three times and put both of them down. Okay. 42 is your mode because it shows up three times. A lot of people get confused here. And the mode is not really that important. It's not that important at all. So if you're going to worry about something, there's two things that you should worry about. The mean and the standard deviation. Because no matter what 
statistics class you're in is going to be driven by those two numbers. Now, I don't care if you're taking research statistics as a graduate student or if you're taking math 301 at Clemson. They all going to be centered around two numbers, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay? So, <laughs> mode, I have no idea. Is there one? 78. Okay? What? Enunciate and volume. Okay? Okay, what's next? Range. Minus, the highest minus the what? Y'all so smart. Mid-range. Mid-range is the same thing as low midpoint. Take the two numbers, the highest and the lowest, and what do you do to them? You, you add them up and divide, you average them up. So the highest plus the lowest divide by what? Two. Now, you need to write these down. If you've forgotten a lot, then you need to write it down. So go out to the side. Um, of X divided by N. Median. If N is odd, middle. If N is even, average, middle, two. Mode shows up most. Range, highest, minus, lowest. And this one is the highest plus the lowest divided by two. So there you go. If you've forgotten a lot of them, there they are. Now also remember this. Hold on a second. For those that ain't bored out of school. What is the N? In this group, what is it? Give somebody give me the definition of n. How many numbers? It's the summation of x, is what it is. All right, but some people get that mixed up with adding all the x's together. But what it is is you add up all the numbers. So n is equal in this case to nine. And but what are these guys called? It's called the pulp. But what is each one of them called? X. Those are your x's. This is x sub one. This is x of 2, x of 3, x of 4, x of 5, and so on. Okay? So if you add all those up, there's two sums. There's one where you add all the x values up, but there's also the sum of how many you have. So x is all these little ones, and n is that number. Now, the reason I go over that is because when we do standard deviation formulas, you're going to have to have n. And some people, they, they blank out and don't know what n is. Well, n is the number of test grades. All right, so here we go. Variation. Now, before I do variation, I'm going to put the formula on the board. Now, I want you to write it down because you're going to have to, you're going to, have to read it. All right? Variance is equal to the summation of x minus x bar quantity squared over n minus 1. Now this is kind of like the outline. I gave you all the outline the first day of class. I told you how to use the outline. Half of you took the outline and put it in your notebook. The other half gaffed it off and y'all were some of the ones that sent in the email about I don't know when homework's due. Okay. All you had to do was go home and print it out and look over it and go over the video of that day of class and say, okay, I know how to do it. Well, how does that have to do with this? Well, I'm giving you the formula right here. And what's going to happen is some of you are going to read the formula and some of you are going to say, <laughs> okay, that's the formula. What's X bar? You're going to start asking me questions. You've got to read 
what the formula says. Now, I'm speaking probably to a quarter of the class, all right? I'm not speaking to all the class, but you've got to read the formula. Some students are conditioned, instead of reading or instead of thinking or instead of printing out, I'll just get the teacher to tell me. I'll just get the teacher to do it. I'll just get the teacher to do it. I'm not going to do that. First thing I'm going to do when you ask me what is so-and-so is I'm going to say read the formula. What does it say do? Okay? I'm not, I'm not, everybody should fail the class. I'm not one of those teachers, but I'm not going to hold your hand too fast. Okay? I'm, I'm a middleistic person, whether it's my politics or whether it's my views on academia. I'm not an extremist. All right? I'm in the middle. And I'm not going to answer 15 questions about this formula when you can answer it yourself. Uh, what, you, what, what is he talking about? Read. Well, read it. What does it say do? Well, he you know to do parentheses first, right? So go inside parentheses. What does inside the parentheses say do? Yeah, it says X. But what does it say do to X? Subtract what? Subtract the mean from each what? Okay, that's what it says. That's what the inside parentheses say. That says for another column, right next to x, and say x minus x four on top, and do that with each one. So do that. Some of y'all going, whoa. This right here. See what it says right here? X minus x bar? We'll put it right here. X minus x bar. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, Hubert, you just punch in and calculate it. Yeah, but when you get frequency distributions, guess what? You can't do it in the calculator. You have to do it by hand. Now, that's something I will always do, is I will always make sure there's something I can put on a test that you can't, you can't do by calculator. Because you ever met one of these people with the cash register? And I do this all the time, just melt down the whole cash register for people. Is your, your bill's $10.56. And you give them a twenty dollar bill, and then you give them six cent. Wash your head, explode. Okay, those are the people I'm targeting. The people that go to the bathroom with their calculator. Okay, name their calculator. That can take their calculator and spin it on their finger like a basketball. Okay, you people suck. All right, you couldn't think how to get out of a wet paper sack if somebody tried to help. You, all right. So if you're one of those people, I'm sorry I've hurt your feelings, but you should not be behind a cash register. You should not work in any place of retail. You should be out on the floor pushing a bag broom. Okay? Because I would not, as a, as a retail property owner, cash register owner, whatever, would never put you behind my cash register. Why? Because you can't do basic flipping math. And if you can't do that math, then you need to get off that calculator. You need to wing off that calculator real quick. Okay? That's just one of my pet peeves. I'm sorry. If you if you can't do simple math, why in the Hades would they put you behind the cash register? Anyway, so x minus x bar, we're going to do that right here. So you take x, and we're going to minus x bar, and for you... Excel people, hit F4 to lock it. And that's just for those people that know how to use Excel. You lock it because if you can't, if you copy it down, the second one is going to take 60. It's going to minus the 76. If you copy it down, it's going to take the 61, and it's going to minus the 60 and 78, and that's going to give you an error. So that's why you have to lock the mean. Check your numbers. Now, it's very important that you check your numbers in your book, notebook, because you're going to use this as an example when you get home and doing homework. All right, now let's read the formula. What does the formula say do after you take x minus x bar? Square it. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You always do after parentheses. What do you do? Exponent. So now we square it. So now we're going to take x 
minus x bar, and we're going to square it. What does this do to every number? There you go, it makes it positive. And that's what you're doing. You're trying to, maybe you could type in short. There. Makes it positive. And there's your numbers there. Now you're going to take that number, these numbers, and what are you going to do to it? What does that big sigma do? Huh? Add them all up. Summation. So we we'll move this out of the way. So add them all up. And that number right there is your numerator. Uh, let's, see, let's change that to per day. So down here on my handy dandy formula, I'm going to take that number in the Verde box and I'm going to put it right here. And I would leave it 555. Five, five. Leave it in there because we're going to talk about rounding here in just a minute. Over n minus 1. Here's when I put 8 down and people go, where'd you take from? Well, I'm sorry. You'll figure it out eventually. Now, finish out that. So now our variance. is equal to, and I could work the um, computer, this number divided by 8. There's your variance. Variance is really not important. Not right now. And another, if you were taking a 220 or you were taking a 301, you would use the variance for other things. But right now we're not using it. We're using it for one reason. Can anybody tell me what that one reason is? Some of you 120 people that have had this class before. Okay, speak up just a little bit more. Yes, you have to have the variance to find the standard deviation. Because the variance, the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the what? The square root of the variance. Or the easy way to do it, the variance raised to the point 0.5 power. That's what we're fixing to talk about. Okay? That's a good question. That tells me that that's something I need to go over. Thank you very much. Dang old squeaky door gets dang old what? Dang old OIL. So here we go. SD is equal to this number raised to the 0.5 power, or one half power. And there is your second most important number. So we're going to color them both green. And we'll color this one blue. So now you've got your two most important numbers. Now what the heck do you do with them? Well now is when you put them to application. The standard deviation basically is a number that tells you how tight your data is when you're comparing it to another set of numbers. Okay. Right now you can't tell squat. So what do you do to tell if your numbers are decent numbers? You look at three numbers. You look at the median, the mean, and the mid-range. So let's look at those three numbers. The mean is what, 72? The median is 76. The mid-range is 72.5 or 73. Somebody tell me what that means. What do you got? You got a 50-50 shot. 
Go ahead and tell me what it means. It's a good set of numbers. Why? Because they're all tightly grouped. Tight. The word tight right there. When you're shooting a weapon, all right? Y'all know what a weapon is, right? It's, it's that evil word called a gun. Guns kill people. You set a 45 right there, it's going to kill somebody. Whatever. You set a knife right there, it could kill somebody too. Somebody what? Picks it up. They're so stupid. Anyway, when you shoot a gun, do you want to have, and you got a target down there, 50 feet down there where the wall is right there, and you're shooting a 9 millimeter. Do you want your group, you got 11 in the, in the clip, you want a group of 11 to be all over this big old poster board? No, you want them right there between the eyes, or right there. You want a, you want a tight group. The tighter, the better. Now, a lot of you say, you're teaching violence. Shut up. All right? I'm trying to tell you the difference between accuracy and precision. All right? You want a tight group. The tighter your group, the better your data. When you're a director or an executive director or a CEO at a company and you, and you delegate somebody to do a job for you on quality assurance, you're going to want that person to have tight numbers. You want to want that person to go out and pull 5,000 tires instead of pulling five tires and finding out what the defects of Michelin Corporation is based on 5,000 tires. You want their numbers to be tight, just like you want that bullet group to be tight. Okay? So the key word there is tight. What if you have a median of 75 a mean of 105, and a median of 36, then your data is all screwed up. Now, can you help that? Yes. There's two things you can do. One, if you're passing out a survey, you need to modify your survey because it sucks. Okay? Another thing you can do, you can always increase your what? Your, your field or your, where you're getting your information from. Instead of the five tires, you need to do 50 or 500 tires. Mm -hmm. Instead of interviewing 50 people, you might need to interview 500 people. And that's what we're going to get into in Chapter 6 and 7 with confidence levels. Okay? So, you want your group to be tight. Now, if you don't have two standard deviations to compare to, then you have to use the median, the mean, and the mid-range as a guide to whether your data is tight or not. The tighter the data, the better the experiment or whatever the survey that you're doing. Okay? Mid-range, median, and mean. Those are all representatives of the what? Huh? Center. I thought you said center. Okay, no losers. I thought you said center. Center. If you, if you notice the title of, of chapter 3, it has something to do with central tendencies. That's a 25-cent word for finding the center. If you're close to the center on three or four numbers, then that means that your numbers are valid, that you've got a tight group of numbers. Now, what throws those numbers off? Unusuals and outliers. Well, what's unusual and outliers? That's what throws goes out of two standard deviations. Now we're going to explain what standard deviation is. Now, if I ask you, if I tell you that I want to paint this room, and I tell you, and some of y'all are painters. I mean, you actually, that's what you're in, that's how you make your living. And I say, I want to paint this room blue. And you measure the room. And you say, I can paint this room for $500 plus or minus $100. That's your estimate. What does this mean? There you go. You put $500 in the middle. And then when you add on the right, you get what? 600. You subtract on the left, 
minus 100, and you get 400. So the estimate really is 400 for what? 600. That's your estimate. This, consider the mean. And this, consider to be the standard deviation. Now apply that to your numbers you just ran. See what you get. Who's got a question? I thought I saw a hand there. Okay. Okay, apply that to your numbers that we just did. Now, if you want to, if you want to, just for instructional purposes, if you want to make them whole numbers, that's fine. You know, make the mean 25 or make it whatever, make it a whole number. And I want you to draw, put it in the middle, put the mean in the middle, and add and subtract. And give me two numbers to the right and to the left of that number. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's take the mean and bring it down here. Let's do it right here. Equals the mean. There's that number. You can call it 72 if you want to. Now, the reason I'm saying call it 72 is to get this in your head. Not do it on the test. What is 9.8 plus 2? 10. So if I said this was 72, what would be adding 10 to the right? And then another 10. 92. So two standard deviations to the right is 92. Two standard deviations to the left would be what? 62 and 52. And now you've just made your normal distribution. Okay, I'm going to show you what that means in just a second. Right now, I'm going to erase this. There we go. And then we'll put all these in the center because it really bugs me when I don't have stuff in the center. I'm a little bit OCD on that. So here, I'm going to equal this number plus the standard deviation and lock the standard deviation. And now I'm just going to copy that to the right. And over here, I'm going to set this minus the standard deviation of 4 and copy that to the left. Now I'll take the handy dandy pen and show you what we've just done. Somebody turn in your book until you find what's called the empirical rule. Anybody got it yet? It's in there somewhere. When you find it, it'll show a graph. It'll be shaded in different colors. And it'll say 34% here, 34% here, 2.5% uh, here, uh, 2.5% here, here, and always to get the middle one. I think it's 11.5. Let's see, 11.5. That'd be 11. 13. 14. No, 13.5. Yeah. Empirical rule. All right, everybody make a note of that and learn it. Now, a lot of you say, well, do we have to learn it? If you want to pass this class because you're going to see it over and over and over. Okay, especially in chapter 6 and 7. So, from here on out, you need to know how to do this. Now, 95% of the population is going to fall between two standard deviations. That's called normalcy. It's called normal. You need to make sure you turn to page 132 and look at it. Okay? Normal. So normal, in our case, would be from 62, I'm sorry, from 52 to what? 92. Or 51 point blah, 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 to 50. 91 point blah blah blah. In other words, 
from those two numbers, 95% of the population should fall in those two numbers. Outside of those two numbers is unusual and outliers. Now, what's the difference between out, uh, not out usual? What's the difference between outliers and unusual? Well, unusual is three standard deviations, and outliers is outside of three standard deviations. So, take a different color, and I'm just going to add another standard deviation out here. Mark it off right there. 52 minus 10 is what? 42? Mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. Okay, and one out here. 92 plus 10 is, I mean, 91 would be 109. Okay, here's your unusual. Right in here. Here's your outlier. What's an outlier? Dang old six foot third grader. Okay? That's an outlier. <laughs> Y'all got me? Dang old Michael Jordan is a basketball player. He's an outlier. All right? Over here, extreme failures. Unusual and unusual failure outliers. Okay? Now, some books, now look on the empirical rule. Some books will knock this 2.5% down to like 2.3 right here and then 0 0.0 or 0.2 right here. I don't know if your book does that or not, does it? Huh? Okay. Well, you need to make a note of that. This is 2.3 and then this is 0.2 or something like that. Now what that means is when you get through with the data, you can project. You can not tell the future, but you can project mathematically where a number is going to fall. If it's going to be normal, or it's going to be an outlier, or if it's going to be unusual, one of the three. Okay? Which most of the time is going to be normal because it's 95%. I like to tell students if you drop 100 people out of a plane, that's where they're going to fall. 95 are going to fall between 52 and 91, and then the rest of them are going to fall, blah, blah, blah. You ever met somebody that, outlier, uh, unusual and outliers are the people that sit through a class and they make 100 on every test, no matter what the subject is. You know what I'm talking about? Or they make a 1600 on SAT or the SAT or the ACT or whatever y'all take them out. All right? They just go in there. You ever been in a classroom, in a college classroom, and you walk in to take the test, and it's like in calculus or something like that, a real difficult subject, and five minutes after the test starts, a student turns the paper in and walks out? Okay? And that person has finished the test, not just turned it in empty? Okay? You always have those. That's why I was, there's always one. You always got one in the group that's going to mess up either the curve or mess up the fun, one of the two. There, there's always one. Okay? You may not never know who it is, but there's always one. Okay? And that's that always one is the unusual or the outliers. Okay? All right. Five number summary. Write that down. Five number summary. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way because that's going to ask you, it's going to ask you the five number summary, I think, in 3.4. Okay, but you don't have to worry about a test until we start talking about z-scores, okay? We're far from z-scores right now. <laughs> All right, so five number summary. I'll put that out here. Uh, where should I put it? Let's put it right here. Five, no, well, I'll move this over here. I can do it. Five number summary. Five number summary consists of the men, first quartile, second quartile, the third quartile. And max.
you'll just have to excuse me. I'm trying to get everything in this page so y'all can have everything. I'll do the men and the max for you. There you go. Okay, I did that. I calculated the men and the max for you. You don't have to do any calculation. It's just the what? It's just the highest and what? Lowest number. So hopefully y'all can get that. If you get that wrong on the test, don't what? Don't tell anybody. Oh, I got the men. Uh, just don't, don't tell anybody. You get that wrong. Just lie, okay? Lie and say you got it right. Okay, do you have to calculate these three? Nope. You already got the second one calculated. The second quartile is also the what? The median. Good job. I'm so impressed. I don't remember stuff. Now, that's also called the 50th percentile also called 25th percentile and this is called the 75th percentile now where do they come up with those names well read your empirical rule your normal distribution like a fuel tank okay what's the extreme left side of the where the o is the red o on the left side on the fuel tank what is that empty zero right then you move to about 25 percent which is about 13 13.5 and 2.5, a little bit over that 13.5, you get to a what? Quarter, which is quarter of a tank, which is 25% full. And then you get to the middle, which is what? Half a tank, which represents 50%. So the area on the left of that center line is 50%. 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.5. And then 75%, be a little above the 13.5, and then on the other side is completely what? Full, 100%, which is 50 and 50. Read it like a fuel tank indicator. Not fuel tank, but fuel tank indicator. All right? So that's why we got a 25th percentile, a 50th percentile, and a 75th percentile. Now, what's the number that represents the, four, the, the first quartile or the 25th percentile? Well, how many numbers are above the yellow number right here? So you got to take the middle two and you got to average them. It's the median of the median. So the upper part, median, lower part, median. So I'm going to take these two numbers and I'm going to highlight them this crappy looking yellow, orange, whatever. And I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to say equals parentheses this number plus this number divided by what? Now, what if that number, what if this number one, one, two, three, four, what if I had five numbers? Would I average the two or just pick the middle? Pick the middle. You got to count above the median. There's four numbers. So you take the average of the middle two. Most of the time, your five number summary is going to be more numbers than this. They're going to give you like 10 numbers instead of nine or not 10, but 12 or 15 numbers. It's a whole lot easier to see. And then my, which one is this one? Well, there's four numbers here. You're going to average those two numbers right there. Then color them blue. parentheses, this number plus this number divided by 2. Now what the heck are you going to do with that? Well, now you're going to do a box plot. And the box plot consists of two parts. A number line and a box plot. Well, the number line is going to be made up of three numbers. Men, 
the max and the mid range. 60 goes right here. 85 goes right here. And 73 in the middle. Now, why, why am I rounding it here? Because you're locating the box plot on the number line. Do you really need to count the decimals on the number line? No. Now, I'm going to graduate the number line. Find the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle. Just go as many times as you want to go. What's half of 13? Six and a half? Then this is 66.5. Okay, so what's half of Okay, so what's six six point five added to seventy three? Seventy nine point five. Now find the middle of the middle here. So what's half of six point five? Three point seven five or three? That's sixty three. That's sixty nine. That's seventy six. That's 83. Now I've got enough because what do you need these numbers for? So you can what? So you can plot the box plot. So we'll make the box blue. And the box is made up of these two. <coughs> so first one's at 60. The Third quartile is at 80. And the middle is at what? 76. Who tells me that tells me that here's the middle. It tells me that this data is a little bit on the right side of center. See, right side of center. So it looks like I've got a, a normal, as far as the raw data right here, these numbers, it looks like it's kind of heavier to the right side of center as far as my data. Now, why am I teaching, why are you, why are you learning these three concepts? You're learning the statistics, you're learning the what the normal distribution would look like in predicting data for this, and then you're looking at what the actual raw data looks like. You're what? You're evaluating your data. You're looking at the data that's coming in, all right? Which that's part of your job. And when you get into the research classes and you get into the more, more advanced statistics, you learn how to write out the survey, you learn how to pick your groups to pass the survey out to, that kind of stuff. How to obtain the data, you know, give people tests and grade them on that test and see. That's where you learn all that stuff. Right now, you're just learning the basic uh, mathematics behind evaluating data. And that's what you're doing, evaluating data based on a group of numbers. Question. It's just a number line, yes. That's why I colored it red and I and I had it separate from the box plot. Because the box plot is different. It, the box plot is dependent upon the number line. So you can't don't and that's the biggest problem, students. They try to combine the two together. They're totally different. The uh, red numbers, the red, ones red in the circle, those are just numbers that are based on the high, low, and the middle. And that's why they're red. That's why I put them on the number line. And then the blue is the actual box plot, which consists of three numbers. Let's see. Now, what you might want to do with your homework, this is this is kind of like a homework assignment. And, <coughs> oh, it's kind of like, <coughs> I'm taking medicine. <coughs> I don't smoke more burritos, okay? But, oh. Anyway, the, you all see this tail on the top. Look, look, I have to, look at this. Look at that. This is a bolus that you give a calf, okay? That's penicillin, but the thing's huge. That's the biggest pill I think I've ever had to take. Anyway, oh, wait, sorry. 
he would donate to black country. But anyway, to make a to make a long story short, um, this is your first part of chapter three. Okay. If you had twenty numbers, this is what you need to do for those of you who want to make an A in the class. When you go home tonight, instead of instead of nine numbers, make up fifteen numbers or fourteen numbers. Make it even. Make fourteen numbers up and see if you can do all of this. If you can do all of it, then you're good on this section. If you get stuck, then we need to we need to do another one tomorrow. Which means what? <laughs> What day is tomorrow from here? Huh? Tuesday. So we'll stop it there, and that'll be that'll be the first part of chapter three. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I speak up. Oh, well, I'll email it, but y'all are gonna screw it up, so I'm not responsible for you. And then if I put read only, then y'all can't use it. But I'll email this to y'all. Y'all gonna screw it up? Okay, now I'm gonna email it to everybody. Um, let me save it first. I know. You just don't realize how people can screw things up. Where y'all going? I ain't told you to leave yet. Where? Are y'all assuming something? Y'all know what happens when you assume, don't you? You make an ass out of you and me. Right now, I'm trying to turn off the daggum. I can't even think. You got me thinking of three things at one time. All right.